This is the Air Still Pro. It's a tiny little still that does both pot distillation and reflux distillation, and I've been putting it through its paces for the last month. So, it's time to do a review. How's it going, Chasers? I hope you're having a kick-ass week. I'm Jesse, this is Still It, and the goal of today's video is to tell you everything that I've learned about the Air Still Pro, uh, and by the end of the video, hopefully, <laughs> let you know whether or not it's worth your hard-earned cash. I don't often do straight-up reviews on this channel, uh, and when I do, I only do them when I have full autonomy to do whatever I want. So what that means is this is not sponsored in any way by Still Spirits. They don't even know I'm recording this at the moment. To be fair, they did sponsor me for a product spotlight a little while ago, uh, and they did send me this unit as part of that deal, uh, but they don't know I'm recording this video right now. I can say whatever I want, and I'm gonna be straight up honest with you, uh, because that's, that's the only way to do a review, right? I think the first thing to do is to go and take a seat, and I'll show you all of the features and functions that this thing has. Let's start out with the pot itself, because this is gonna be the easy part. Uh, if you have seen a air still, a standard air still that's been out for a while, this thing is almost identical. There is a couple of small little changes. Uh, number one is the reset button is different. It's not really gonna affect you. What might affect you uh, is the fact that they now have a LED indicator on the pot itself to show you that the pot is in fact on, which is mwah. Uh, it is pretty much the same construction uh, and it is exactly the same size. So it is a four liter capacity. And if you're popping, um, you know, like a straight sugar wash in here with some anti-foam or uh, what do they call it? Uh, conditioner, I've seen it called as well you'll probably get four liters no problem. Uh, if you're putting low wines in here, four liters is no problem. If, however, you're doing stripping runs of like a, a rum wash or an all grain wash, it ain't gonna happen, just so you know. Uh, you're gonna be probably more like down at the three level mark is probably about where I would wanna be. Insulation is decent, it's heated from underneath, uh, and because of that, it's actually relatively resistant to scorching. I wouldn't say it's immune. Uh, I wouldn't say that they specifically suggest that you should do that. But if you've watched the Meme Spirits episodes at all, you'll know that I've pushed this thing pretty freaking hard, like just cramming it full of chocolate biscuits and stuff like that. And it does pretty well. So the thing runs on the standard appliance jug cable, whatever you want to call it, the same as the air still. Uh, and it does come in 220 volt and 110 volt options for the Americans. Uh, and this time, instead of plugging directly into the pot, it plugs into, eh, into the head itself. Uh, and then there's another little cable that goes from the head to the pot. So the main thing that's different about this still, compared to anything else in this like kitchen appliance-y kind of form factor, uh, is the fact that it does both pot distillation and reflux distillation in this one little form factor. So uh, you press the button on front to turn it on and put it into standby mode. You know it's in standby because you have the white light. Uh, and if you short press, it'll turn green and that tells you you're in reflux mode. If you long press it from standby mode, you get put into pot distillation mode and you know you're in pot distillation mode because it has a purple light. <laughs> this is tricky, I can't actually see. There we go. All right, so you may have also noticed that there's this little jar here and that just pulls out like so. This is the automatic four shots collection jar. Uh, and all this does really is at the beginning of any distillation, whether it's in pot still mode or reflux mode, it'll fill this up to right around 25 mils before anything will start coming out the spout. I'm gonna talk about my thoughts on all these things a little bit later on. I just wanna run through all of the features now so you're up to speed. Cool, that just pulls out and then goes back in like so. Up on top here, there is also a little pressure fit lid that pops off uh, and inside that little compartment is a botanical basket, which is uh, actually a lot more elegant than the, the, the little cradle thing that sits on the standard ear still. And because this is an ear still, funnily enough, uh, you don't have any running water, which is excellent. 
that is very, very cool that you can just pick the thing up, plonk it on the table uh, and hit go without having to stress about, you know, plumbing water for it. Another interesting feature is that when you first turn the still on, uh, the fans will spin up. I don't, I don't know why. I guess to make you feel better and know that they work. I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, but then they'll actually turn off and the fan will stay turned off until the pot is almost up to temperature, which is kind of cool, I'll admit, because it, um, it's not noisy, it's using less power, I assume, although that'd be negligible. Uh, but more importantly to me is uh, it's a nice indication that you're almost ready to go because the fan, you know, turns back on again. Also, the pot itself will turn off if it gets uh, too hot, if it boils dry. Uh, I assume that's like a temperature thing. If it gets over 100 degrees Celsius, it'll cut itself off. Uh, and the head unit will turn the pot off, uh, like literally just, it'll turn the, uh, the power supply off to the pot if it decides that it's putting power into the pot and I guess vapor's not coming through. I actually ran into that uh, during testing and I'll, I'll talk about that in a little bit. And lastly, probably what you're most interested in at this point in time uh, is that still spirits claim that in pot still mode, you'll get 80% ABV uh, and in reflux mode, you can hit 90% ABV. But if there's anything I've learned with consumer products is that you should take that with a grain of salt. <laughs> at the very least. Uh, so I decided to do some relatively in-depth testing on this thing to see exactly what it would produce. Just to let you know real quickly that the Airstill Pro is available in New Zealand through chasethecraft.com. Uh, for those of you outside of New Zealand, it's probably not worth buying it from us uh, for shipping reasons. If you want to, get in touch and uh, we'll see what we can do for you. But I will try and put some links down in the description uh, for those of you that are in different parts of the world if you really want to pick this thing up. The next part of this video is going to be me throwing some data at you from test runs I did on this machine. Uh, I've written down notes and I'm going to rip through it as quickly as I can. But uh, if that's not your thing, uh, you can skip this little test part in the playhead down below. Uh, so first of all, I wanted to test this in the best light possible, so I added two liters of 40% ABV wash into the still and run it in reflux mode. The first thing of interest to note is that the first drips going into the uh, Four Shots Collection little vial were way down at 79% ABV, but that quickly raised up to 90% ABV by 60 mils in total. I'll place my bets on what's going on here uh, in just a little bit, okay? Impressively, the ABV hovers right around the 90% mark for a full 250 mils before settling again closer to 89% uh, until 600 mils in total. It's not overly relevant in this case because I was actually using feints as a dummy run for this, but if I was gonna make cuts and actually collect the spirit that I was running through it, I would have made the cut from heads to hearts at just under 100 mils in total, uh, and then the cut from hearts to tails at right around 450 mils. So that's an interesting result, we'll talk more about that in a little bit, but what if we charge the still with one liter of 25% ABV and ran it in reflux mode? Now interestingly, the first drips were very, very similar to the first one, and once again they rose quickly over the first sort of 40 to 60 mils, uh, but this time they topped out at just over 88% ABV. When I charged the still with one liter of 10% ABV, uh, the highest I got was only 81%, and only for a little tiny amount of time before it dropped off quickly. When in reflux mode and hovering between 88% and 90% ABV, the offtake speed was a super, super consistent 166 mils per hour. And as expected, that offtake speed dropped off uh, near the end of each run as the ABV lowered as well. Heat up time for the smaller runs was 17 and 18 minutes respectively, uh, and when charging the still with two liters at 40% ABV, heat up time was 28 minutes in total. The total time to collect 700 mils from the larger run with two liters at 40% ABV was four hours and 50 minutes. That included heat up time and the much, much slower offtake speed near the end of the run though. 
I also tested pot still mode with the air still pro and the standard air still next to each other. Surprisingly, the standard air still heated up about five minutes quicker uh, and it was quicker throughout most of the run in terms of volume. The air still pro did catch up at the end. And if you're comparing for stripping runs, uh, the Airstill Pro actually performs quicker over the course of the full run because it pulled a greater percentage of the total pure alcohol in the pot out in a quicker amount of time. In other words, if you're running it as a spirit run, it's gonna be slightly slower than the Airstill, but it's gonna be at a higher ABV. Uh, but if you're using it for stripping runs, it works out about the same and it actually gives you a better overall efficiency by pulling more out of the pot a little bit easier. I need to jump in here real quick and say a huge thank you to the Patreons. Thank you so much Patreons for being the people that support us day in, day out. We thoroughly freaking appreciate it. So thank you very much. Uh, for everyone else, if you're finding value in these videos uh, and you would like to contribute back to the channel, uh, we would appreciate that and it definitely helps us make better content. You can find a link for Patreon in the description down below and uh, now we're doing, officially doing, Q&As once a week, so you can jump in on that action too. So, uh, does the still actually do what it says on the box? Yeah, pretty much. Uh, I guess you could, you could definitely say that saying that it pulls 80% in pot still mode could be kind of misleading in some ways, uh, but anyone that is familiar with distillation is going to look at that number and know exactly what it is. It's going to start at around 80%, depending on what you put in the pot, and it's going to slowly drop throughout the run. That's what pot still distillation does, and it's what makes pot still distillate taste the way they do. Uh, pulling the packing out of this column, I'll be real with you, is kind of a pain in the butt, and I don't think I'll ever do it. I'll just run cleaning runs every now and again, you know, put put some vinegar through there to clean it out. Uh, until I'm shown that I should be doing something different, you know, if, if, if a problem arises. Reflux mode. Dude, I am impressed with this thing. When I first looked at this and saw how big it was, and I saw that they were claiming that they were getting 90% off it, my thoughts were, really? <laughs> Uh, but it does it does the thing. Now, to be fair, obviously you need to have, uh, you know, definitely above 30%. I'd say 35 to 40% is going to be the sweet spot on this thing in terms of your low wines ABV. But if you do that, yeah, it pumps out 90% or damn close to 90% for a good portion of the run. If if you were expecting something better from something this size, look at the size of the freaking column. Uh, I think you believe in magic, <laughs> is, is the short way to put it. Uh, and I'm glad that they're not overclaiming or overstating about what this thing can do. Are they taking the very best numbers in the best situation? Yeah. But man, like, I don't know. That's just kind of the way that the world works, right? That's what marketing is. And yes, at 90%, you can totally make a drinkable vodka with the caveat that you need to be careful about your recipe production. You, you're not going to just make a turbo wash, throw it into this, strip it, uh, reflux still it, whoops, and then drink it and have a nice product without carbon filtering the bejesus out of it. That's kind of what the still spirits ecosystem tends to be about, because they have those products as well, and it's for newer distillers. But you can totally make solid vodka at 90% uh, if you're happy to kind of curate the recipes you select, put some extra effort into the recipes you make, uh, and then drink a vodka with a decent amount of flavor representation from the original product. So you're gonna reach 95% ABV, like neutral azeotrope with this thing. No, <laughs> no you're not. Uh, but that's not really what it has in mind, in my opinion. Every now and again, perhaps, like three or four times out of the eight times I've run this in reflux mode, the flavor would just change really quickly and get a little bit rougher. And then it would take about 30 to 40 seconds to clean itself back up again. And what I think is happening there is something's affected kind of the, the balance of the column. Uh, and you see this in, like I see this all the time in, in my reflux still setups. It's not 
so much an issue with this still itself. It's just the, uh, there's a lot of different factors that can go into keeping a, a reflux still balanced. The difference is when it's a, you know, when you're running a manual still that you control everything on, it's your fault, <laughs> but you can also do things relatively quickly to try and fix it. Uh, this, you don't control anything, you just press go. Um, so, so it's, I guess it's the still's fault, uh, but in reality, I think it's probably like the ambient temperature changed or I knocked the still and the pump that's running in it or whatever, S something happened. Uh, but to its credit, it did fix it up within about, I would say the longest would have been 60 seconds at most. Uh, my intuition says it's sort of 30 to 40 seconds where it fixes itself up pretty quickly. Uh, so I can't, I can't knock it for that because, it, like I said, it just happens in reflux stills. Uh, but I thought you should know about it. The second was that in one of the runs, I started collecting off the top in uh, reflux mode. And then soon after I got first drips, it just stopped producing. The fans were still running uh, and nothing was coming out the spout. And I couldn't figure out why. Finally, I realized that the light on the pot down here was turned off uh, and pressing the reset button did absolutely nothing. Uh, and in the end, I worked out that this was actually my fault. I don't know for sure, but I think what happened is that this little guy was plugged in poorly enough <laughs> by me uh, that it actually, maybe when it heated up, it kind of expanded and it stopped getting electricity into the pot. This thing actually has a built-in uh, measure to stop supplying electricity to the pot when it detects that the run is near the end. I plugged it in properly, I turned it all off, pressed the reset button, turned it back on, and it ran fine. Not the still's fault, totally my fault, uh, but once again, it was the, one of the biggest issues I had, so I thought I should tell you about it. So, before we get onto the pointy end of this review where I actually tell you my opinions on all of this and whether or not I think it's worth owning, uh, we need to talk price, because everything is relative to price, right? Uh, and I'm going to be slightly generic here in terms of pricing because this is the internet and it's 2023 and God knows what's going to happen to pricing a month from now when you watch this video. Right now, anyway, uh, it is roughly $800 for the full system in New Zealand and, hold on, hold on, uh, roughly $525 in America. Uh, you can also, however, just buy whoop, the head. Uh, so if you already have an ear still, you can just buy this part for, in New Zealand, uh, roughly $600, and in America, a little under 400 bucks. So, hmm. Anyway, uh, let's go sit down again and I shall run through all of my pros and cons for the Airstore Pro. So we've reached the point in the review where I need to tell you all of the things that I personally think are really great about this unit. And the first thing on the list is size. Half of you-ish are probably completely agreeing with me right now, and half of you are saying I'm nuts right now. And don't worry, I'm gonna play devil's advocate on this in a little bit. But the amount of people out there that are 100% stoked on using tiny little stuff like this because uh, they're in a small apartment, because they are traveling in a camper van or on a yacht or uh, going bush in a, you know, like a, a ute or a truck, whatever you want to call it. The amount of people that are into the hobby, into the craft with those stipulations are nuts. Not to mention the people that have uh, significant other sign off for the hobby with something like this that you know you can just put in the in the bathroom cupboard or whatever uh, as opposed to having a 30 liter milk can or t500 or even forbid a 50 liter keg so that in my mind is a huge part of why this thing is really cool and in fact it's it's the one defining feature that makes this thing worth it it's also insanely easy to use you fill it up you plug it in you press the button that's it and once again this is I'm going to play a devil's advocate on that in a little bit because that's going to show up in the negatives as well. Uh, but for people that are getting into the hobby, awesome. It lets them just start. Uh, for people 
that are running test batches uh, and they want to be able to just kind of have it semi-repeatable but not put a bunch of time and effort into it because it's the first step in R&D, that's kind of awesome as well. Also, at least in New Zealand, there's a three-year warranty on this thing. Uh, and that comes from a relatively established brand. And nothing's 100%. I get that. Things change. Things go pear-shaped. But if you're going to trust in a warranty, a brand that is more likely to stick around for a long time and have kind of a name to defend, are more likely to honour a warranty or be able to honour a warranty. I've never had a problem with any of their products, uh, but just so you know, from what I've heard, they do expect you to post the unit back to them on your own dime to be able to honour that warranty. So another huge positive for this kind of machine is that it is a great way to get into the hobby if you don't want to be DIYing and building and changing and modding equipment. You just buy the thing, it works, that's great. But if you do decide to get into that stuff, which personally I think is kind of fun and it's a whole lot more functional for you in the hobby as well, this isn't gonna be useless. I mean, you guys see how often I use the standard air still on the channel uh, because it's just so easy to set it up anywhere. You can put it on the kitchen bench and make a couple of liters of a test batch of gin, and it costs you barely any time, comparatively, uh, and it costs you almost nothing in terms of ingredients. It also has all of the positives of the original air still, one of those being the, the test batch side of things, but also just the fact that this is actually pretty scorch resistant. I won't officially endorse like putting, you know, a bourbon wash in here with uh, all of the grain in it, because it might be pushing it a little bit, but the stuff that I have put in mine is pretty bonkers. <laughs> the fact that I haven't created a burnt, scorched mess in meme spirits yet is, is kind of crazy. So that is pretty dope. And of course, like the original air still, it's waterless as well, which once again just means you can plonk it down wherever you damn well please plug the thing in and run it. But I haven't talked about the giant elephant in the room yet, which is, of course, the versatility of this thing, being able to do pot distillation, and reflux distillation, up to 90% ABV. But look at the size of the freaking thing. It's so crazy. Like I, I'm still impressed that something this size gets to 90% uh, consistently throughout a run. All right, now it is time to talk about some of the not so good things about this still. The first thing I have to bring up is size, freaking size. Uh, I get it. For a bunch of you, this is just going to make no sense whatsoever because you don't care about size. If you don't care about size, this isn't the still for you, all right? And I'll be real with you, the idea of making neutral spirit in a small form factor like this just seems like work to me. I don't enjoy making neutral. I enjoy having neutral that I can turn into something else. So I'd much rather just make a dirty great big batch, like fill a 50 litre keg up with low wines, turn it into neutral and do that like three or four times a year instead of running this thing all day every day for a month. <laughs> but to flip back to the other side, there's just some people who can't have a 50 litre keg. They don't have a big shed, they don't have anywhere to put it. Or they've got that stuff at home, but they love to still make products when they go camping. And that sounds super niche, but the amount of people that have told me that's exactly what they do in the last month talking about this is kind of nuts. The second thing that isn't great about this is that it is completely and utterly auto. That's a good thing for some people. For others, it's kind of crap. It's just going to do what it wants to do and you can't change the fact. And that kind of shows up uh, in the fact that when you first run this, the, the column doesn't fully balance. The column doesn't fully fraction out and stack itself. And that's why the, the ABV creeps up for the first, you know, 50 mils of production. If this was a still that you could run manually, you just chuck it into 100% reflux and get straight to 90% from the get-go, right? In fact, you'd probably get a little bit higher. That's a downside for a lot of people. The botanical basket, in my mind, is also definitely on the small side. It's kind of ridiculous. If you just 
throwing a little something in there to flavor something, that's fine. It'll do the job. Uh, functionally, it works fine. But if I'm even making like a one bottle batch of gin, this wouldn't hold the juniper. It wouldn't hold half the juniper that I would want to put into it. I wouldn't say it's a gimmick. Uh, it's still functional and it works fine for what it is, but you're not going to do like a full recipe of gin with everything in the vapor path. It ain't going to happen. The top is also actually kind of hard to get off. And this is, it's not a huge problem by, all, by any means. It's just a little bit niggly and it feels like it could have been dealt with in a little bit more of an elegant way. Um, but there's no longer a handle on top like the other air still has. The uh, Four Shots Collection jar as well. I have yet to pull this out without it spilling all over the freaking place. It's just the way it seems to be. Once again, it's not a, um, it's not a deal breaker. It's just not entirely elegant. The Four Shots collection in general, in my mind, is not, how do I put it? It's nice for peace of mind for people that are new to the hobby and just want to get started. They can go, okay, the Four Shots are taken care of, I know I'm safe, so on and so forth. That's cool, it's getting people into the hobby faster. I like that. Uh, for anyone that's run a still for any length of time or has done a solid amount of research this thing's completely and utterly useless. <laughs> I mean, as far as I can tell, you can just bypass it because if this is full, the way it works is as soon as this is full, it just diverts over, sends liquid over that way. Um, so you could just fill it up and leave it in there and just never empty it. And of course, on the negative side of the ledger, we need to talk about price. I get it, it's 2023. Inflation's doing all sorts of weird things. The uh, R&D expenses for this were incurred at a much, much higher cost, I'm sure, than the air still itself. But at $800 New Zealand, $500 American, I think that pricing is gonna push a bunch of people over the line from, hey, that's kind of cool, and I'd kind of like to have it in my kit, to, eh. <laughs> And that's a call you're going to make. I, I still think, honestly, at that price, for the people that l are going to love this product, it is well worth paying the price for. I just think there's like a, a, a cutoff point of a bunch of people that would have got into this product if it was slightly less expensive. So that brings me to the next point that we need to talk about, which is oh, what is the competition for this bad boy? Future Jesse here. I forgot to mention uh, that when you're switching from pot still to reflux mode, you need to switch these little nozzles out, which just restrict the flow of liquid going through them. It's not exactly a negative, uh, but the chances of losing one of these things for people like me is kind of high. <laughs> and it's a slight, like a very slight annoyance to actually have to do it. They're super easy to pull in and out. I have seen a bunch of people trying to compare the Airstill Pro to the Airstill. And in my mind, that it almost just doesn't make sense to do that. The only time it makes sense to compare these two is, and for me, if you have no distilling equipment and you're trying to decide what to buy to get into the hobby, and you want something this size, like appliance size, but you're trying to decide whether you want to uh, just make double pot still, triple pot stilled style products, or if you want to get into being able to make vodka um, and then all of the things that you can make from a, a neutral spirit. Macerations, fruit macerations, gin, absinthe, so on and so forth. In that case, the question is kind of do you upgrade yourself? Do you upsell yourself from just this, where you're mostly going to be doing double or triple pot stilled type things, up to, do I want to pay all of the extra money to be able to make pretty solid vodka and then, you know, use that to make gin and so on and so forth? In that case, it makes sense to compare these two. But for a hundred and fifty dollars less, you can get a T500. And yes, this thing is mostly set up to do reflux, but you can kind of replumb it, do a wee bit of DIY work on it and use it in reflux mode and pot still mode. This is 100% a better reflux still than that. 
you can kind of push 90 to 93% on this, as opposed to kind of like 88 to 90% on this, depending on the situation you're in. And you can use it as a pot still. And look at all the volume you get. It's so much easier to make a decent amount of neutral with this. But you lose the ability to have a small unit to pop it away just in the kitchen cupboard. And if you go with this, you lose the ability to make smaller batches of products. So that is a little bit of a downside. But this plus this is gonna be about $200, $250 more than just this. So you get a whole lot better reflux system that can make a whole lot more product easier to a higher ABV and now you've got the ability to make the small batches and do the test stuff in this in pot still mode, which honestly, all of the testing stuff, I'm gonna do in pot still mode anyway, not in reflux. Or ditch the air still completely and get a real cheap down and dirty pot still that you've gotta heat with gas and you have gotta cool with water, but this plus this is about the same price as that. Hmm, options, huh? <laughs> And if you're in America, you've got a few more options. Uh, for example, instead of the T500, you could go with the claw hammer setup, uh, which is slightly more expensive, yes, but it gives you way more functionality. Now, the slight downside to it would be, I think the T500 is a little bit easier just to pull out of the box and get running for a new distiller. So we have inevitably got to the point in the video where I need to just say, yes, I think you should buy this, or no, I don't think you should. And I think there's a few different camps of people that I need to speak to separately here. First of all, is the group of people that look at this and say, that's really expensive and it's tiny. And I completely agree with you. It is expensive compared to what else you could get for the money if you're not worried about size. If you're in that camp, this isn't for you. If you're in that camp and you have no equipment at all at the moment, I would suggest starting with something in the 25 to 40 litre vicinity in terms of pot size. And ideally, if you can, get something flexible where you can do uh, double pot distillation and reflux. So the T500 is a decent option for that. The claw hammer is a slightly better option for that. There'll be links down there for that as well. And then if you want the ability to have a smaller still to do test batches in, look at the original air still, or just a El Cheapo small pot still. If you're one of those people, and I cannot, I, I'm so surprised how many of you are out there uh, that already have a decent distilling setup, but you want something for the batch, but you want something for the boat, but you want something for the campground or for going out back or whatever it happens to be, then this is actually a pretty decent option if you have the cash, simply because it's tiny and it's super freaking versatile. And lastly, I think the group of people that are gonna be most interested in this and are most likely to buy it and will be happiest with it if they do, are people that are looking at getting into the hobby. They're not so stressed about the difference of $100 or so. That's not a big deal to them. Uh, perhaps they're into an adjacent hobby, beer brewing, wine making, mead making, heck, even stuff like um, sourdough or cheese, things where fermentation is key and they just love the idea of fermentation. They don't want to buy a whole bunch of equipment because they've already got <laughs> hobby stuff coming out their ears. They want something small, they want something that you can just pull out, hit play on, do the thing and get the stuff out the bottom end. I think that is the group of people that are going to be most interested in this. And to be honest, it is a pretty damn good option for you. Yes, it only goes to 90% ABV, but that is 100% good enough to make a vodka or uh, to turn a vodka into gin. It's pretty damn good. It's tiny. It's so space efficient. And you can make pretty much any style of spirits you can imagine in this one still, as long as you're happy to take a little bit of extra time and effort to do it. Future Jesse here again to let you know that I should not be allowed to do late night B-roll. I broke the four shots jar. Muppet.
So, I hope this video has been helpful. I hope it's helped you decide to uh, forget about it and not spend your money on it, or just jump right in and do the thing. <laughs> if you do wanna do that, there's links down there. Um, using any of those links either helps us out because you're buying direct from us, or there'll be a small affiliate kickback that we'll get, and we appreciate either very much. If it's not for you, don't get it. Get something else. Uh, I'll put some links down there for some other options as well. Uh, but most importantly, uh, have a kick-ass week, guys, and I'll catch you next time. See ya.